I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer, and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, your host on the Advancement Spot podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. This is part one of a two-part podcast looking at the different struggles that I see in professional and graduate school applicants and how to overcome these struggles. The first struggle that I see is fear of the process and of the competition, which actually I've seen paralyze people. I have seen clients that have been trying to apply for one cycle, two cycles, three cycles, and every single time they tell me, well, I was just too busy, or I'm just too busy now, I'll apply next year, or I've already done all of this stuff, I already have all of this experience, but I still need more. Let me just reflect on this for a moment. Pushing off or procrastinating the application is probably not your best bet. It's probably not a great idea because you're always going to be busy. There's always going to be something that gets in the way. And that initial feeling of pushing something off may give you sort of instant gratification of, okay, who the pressure's gone. I don't have to worry about this right now. But you know that you're just going to have to worry about it down the road. And you can keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. But that is not going to get you anywhere. It's not going to get you your advancement. And it's certainly not going to get you accepted. So one thing that you can do is just start by making those small steps. Just start by looking up the schools that you want or the jobs that you want. Or just start by thinking about how you're going to get that promotion. Just start putting these little thoughts in your mind that will lead to your eventual success, that will contribute to your advancement. These may seem like small steps, just starting to look up the school, just starting to think about this. But each little teeny step builds and builds and builds and builds over time until you are there. These steps are not a waste of time. They help to form your thoughts about a process. And the more that you investigate a process, the more that you disentangle a process, the more that you demystify a process, the less uncomfortable it becomes. The more familiar you are, the less uncomfortable. Another thing that I hear is that applicants say, I've done a little bit of volunteering, or I've done a little bit of research work, or I haven't done any of this, or I haven't done any of that, and that they need more, more experience, more time. So I have sort of a twofold response to this. The first is that if that's true, that the experience that you need, you actually don't have. For example, if you're applying to a graduate program and you don't have any research experience and you don't have any proposed research for that program, then you probably do need to do a little bit more work on the back end in order to figure out exactly what you want to do in the one or more programs that you're applying to, and you may actually need some research experience. But if you have already gotten some research experience, you just think it's not enough, what I would say is I think that you're fearful of the process, that the anxiety of the process is getting to you, and that why don't we just have a conversation in order to really tease out what experience you have had and what lessons you've learned in those experiences. Because often when we have this sort of conversation, we begin to understand that we have done as much as we need to do at this point in time in order to advance. And so what I would encourage in this circumstance is that you really do a brain dump of everything that you have been involved in and that you take notes on each of the roles that you've engaged in, what you were responsible for. Go back in your emails, go back in your calendar, go back as far as you can and see what you did. And I can almost guarantee you that you have done more than you think. Fear of the process and fear of competition is really at the core having a lack of confidence in your own abilities. As we know here at Apply Yourself, we don't ignore the competition. We know that they exist, 
but we understand the competition and we use our understanding of the competition as a tool to help you move forward in order to advance. One of the really helpful tools that I have found in really competitive circumstances, for example, going in to write a standardized test. You know from the last episode that I wrote the MCAT much earlier on and I wrote the LSAT. And one of the ways that I was able to go into these testing experiences and had a very positive experience in both of them was that I visualized the people sitting around me also writing the test were my peers. This humanizes the competition. It doesn't demonize them or vilify them. It humanizes them. It makes you realize that every person around you who's writing your standardized test on that day or who's applying to the program or who's applying to that job, these people may one day be your peers, may one day be your colleagues. And so it's really important that we just humanize the competition a little bit and we we don't get so afraid of those numbers, those statistics on the people who were admitted into various programs, for example. It's really important to view these people as your peers, your potential eventual colleagues. The second common struggle that I see in applicants is insecurity in yourself. This is one of the biggest things that we work through with our clients is understanding where this insecurity comes from in order to be able to address it and move forward. So this doesn't mean that we go digging into your past, but what it does mean is that we have to identify where these feelings come from and how we can move on from them. And insecurity really is trying to gain the approval and the acceptance of others. Insecurity is also feeling like you're not good enough, feeling like other people are better than you, feeling like if you just had X, Y, or Z, or if you just looked a certain way or felt a certain way, that you would be better. It's this feeling that others are better than you. And the thing is that that is not a mindset that helps to advance you. The problem with trying to gain the approval and acceptance of others rather than gaining the acceptance and approval from yourself is that you are then operating based on other people's agendas, on other people's expectations of you. And so what this does is it guides you in a way that strays from your own values and from your own goals. And maybe you find yourself in a position that you're not even able to identify what your own goals are because you've been so preoccupied with other people's goals for you, other people's expectations of you, other people's agendas for you. And so what's really important is that we try to identify this when it's happening and we develop strategies in order to move forward from these feelings in order to get to know yourself, identify your goals independently from those other people. We may also be afraid of social rejection and insecurity, breeding feelings of shame, guilt, anger, loneliness, or anxiety when you don't get that external approval. For example, I hear all the time in the applications process, even as a professor for some of my students, I hear, well, you know, my my friend read my paper and they said that it was good. Or I hear, I emailed my application to X person and they said that it was good. I just need to, you know, add a word here or there. And then I see it, the application, or I grade the paper and either the paper doesn't meet the expectations as set out in the syllabus and as discussed, Or in the case of applications, there are massive important pieces of the application that I know should be there because I've been on admissions committees and job search and promotion committees that just simply aren't there. And one of the really important things that I try to impress is that, as you know, applications and advancement is not intuitive. It's a skill. And so in order to develop this skill, you need experience in developing this skill. And what that means is that relying on other people who haven't been through the processes or who are still going through the processes and and haven't gained experience in this area won't be able to provide 
the sort of honest, experience-informed help and support that you'll need. But you do get that sense of validation. You do get that sense of external validation, that sense of acceptance that you've done something right, that they approve of your application. But the problem is that they're not the ones on the committee, that they may be in the same position as you. They may also be applying to programs and know just as much about the process as you do. And so it's really important that we take this step back and we don't rely on others for external validation or approval of our work products, of our goals. Now, that's not to say that getting other opinions from people whom you trust isn't important. It may be for you. It may be the right thing for you. In some cases, it may not be. That's up to you to decide. Ultimately, we have to understand that getting external approval ends up actually decompressing some of the anxiety that we have in these circumstances, in these processes, sometimes we actually need that pressure in order to improve, in order to produce. So if somebody else says something is good, we may think, oh, we can put it away and not look at it anymore. When actually what we need to do is really do a critical analysis of what's included, what's missing. If it was me, I would take a look at your resume, your CV. I would ask even more questions to figure out what's missing from your resume and CV and Almost 100% of the time, something is missing from that resume or CV, and that ends up being important. We also end up really fleshing out experiences, your experiences in ways that are not fleshed out in your resume or CV, and this helps us to formulate your materials. And so it's really important that, first of all, we trust the process and we trust the discomfort that comes with processes of growth and advancement because growth and advancement is not easy. It is not easy and it is trying, it's exhausting, and it can be very lonely if you don't feel like you have support from people who understand. You may have very supportive people around you and that's wonderful if you do. You also may feel like you want the understanding and support of somebody who's been through these processes. And from that perspective, it's not a good idea to send materials to people who you either don't know or who don't have experience in these areas in order to actually provide you with critical improvements in order to make your materials the most amazing that they can be. We need to be able to take a step back and see all of your own experiences and the value that you bring to the table. Relying on external validation, for example, likes on social media or doing something for somebody else purely for the response from them that you've done something great for them and receiving that external validation can create a very foggy path forward because what you want and what you approve of yourself becomes more and more unclear or can become more and more unclear. So for example, likes on social media. If you get likes, you feel good. If you get more likes, you feel really good. If you get some shares, you may also feel good. But if you don't get a lot of likes or engagement, then you feel like you've done something wrong and automatically your mind goes to a place, oh my gosh, I shouldn't have posted or, ooh, I should delete that post. Now, the thing is that everyone scrolls by things and doesn't like them, right? Doesn't actually click like, but they may like them. They may laugh. They may find value in it, but they may not do anything about it. Or in some cases, somebody may be shy to like something, right? They don't necessarily want it to show that they've liked something. And so external validation, especially on social media, can be detrimental to our own advancement because it stops us from moving forward because we will be functioning based off of somebody else's expectations and we will be feeding into somebody else's perception of what we should be doing rather than our own. And what happens is we end up being mosaics of other people and their expectations, not our own. And we begin to feel lost. We begin to feel stuck and we feel as though we're unable to move forward from this place because we don't know how we got here. We got here based on somebody else's plan, somebody else's expectations, not our own. And so it can be very hard to find a way forward. So what do we do? We have to realize our own worth. Realize it. Realize it. You are worth it. 
Set appropriate boundaries for yourself. Get clear on who you are, what your values are, what you want, what your goals are. What are your next best steps to move forward while still being conscious of others? This entails a process of continued reflection. And I promise you growth and thriving is on the other side. It may be uncomfortable to reflect. It may be uncomfortable to look back on experiences that you may not be happy with or that you haven't yet processed. But I promise you, you will learn so much about yourself through this process and you will grow to learn about the value of continued reflection and analysis of yourself. Growth and thriving is on the other side. Your advancement is on the other side. You are strong enough to do this work. You are strong enough that you don't need the external validation. You don't need it because it's not serving you. Don't underestimate yourself. You're not powerless. Everyone has strengths. Everyone has areas to work on. That doesn't mean that we're bad at something. That doesn't mean that we're, that there's anything wrong with us. What it means is that you're able to identify something that you can work on and turn it into a strength. So instead of external validation, that relying on somebody else for their approval, remember that's based on their own perception of what they think should be happening, not yours. We instead look at what internal validation looks like. And this is much more challenging. What does internal validation look like? Internal validation means that you are able to validate your own feelings. You don't rely on other people to validate your own feelings. If you feel anxious about something, you're accepting of that for yourself. You validate that for yourself without judgment. It means that you may need some camaraderie. You may need some support from people around you, but you don't need them to tell you, oh yeah, anxiety is normal here or it's not normal here. Because it doesn't matter if it's normal or not normal, you feel it. So accept that you feel it without judgment. And it's much easier to move on from that place than from a place of waiting for other people's acceptance or approval of the way that you're feeling. Because those approvals are fleeting. Those approvals will not stay. Those approvals only breed the need for more approvals from other people. Instead, rely on yourself for validation and acceptance of yourself and your feelings. Move through those feelings, allow yourself to move through those feelings of discomfort, of anxiety, of loneliness, whatever it is, or of joy or excitement or achievement. If you feel that way, that's great. And celebrate and bring in other people who care about you to celebrate with you. But you don't need the validation. You're ultimately working on your advancement for yourself. Celebration is wonderful. And so is camaraderie when you need support. But don't rely on that external validation in order to make you feel approved by them or accepted by them. You don't need that. Acceptance of yourself is hard work. Not accepting that of yourself can hold you back. And we certainly work on this with our clients. I see it all the time with clients, with students. This is so common and it's not talked about nearly enough. The need to accept yourself and your process that will be different from somebody else's process. The way that you write an essay may be completely different from somebody else and how they write an essay. The way you write an essay may be completely different from how I write an essay. The way that you study for a standardized test may be completely different than somebody else who studies for a same or similar standardized test. The way that your brain processes information may be extremely different than the way that other people process information. And all you need to do is do a little bit of research into this area to really understand the infinite ways that people think and understand things and memorize things and make sense of the world around them. So really try to take a step back and get to know yourself, get to know how you do things, how you feel things, how you handle things. And if you need support in how you handle things in order to ensure that you're taking healthy steps forward rather than unhealthy steps forward or stress-induced unhealthy steps forward, then support is always there. That brings us to the end of today's episode. Stay tuned for the next set of struggles and strategies in part two next week. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. See you next week. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at Apply Yourself Global and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.